Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this video is the start of a brand new tutorial series. This series is for beginners in PyQt5 and you can also follow along even if you're not a complete beginner. In this series, I'll be showing you how to create the small application with PyQt5. Now what this application does is that it is a daily task planner in which for each day on the calendar, let's say today is January 18th, I am able to check and uncheck my tasks for this day. And then I can go to another day, for example, the 17th, and I can check my tasks for this day. All right, that's really the main point of the application. Other features we have in this application are the ability to check and uncheck tasks depending on whether we um, actually perform these tasks or not. Then I can save my changes to the database. I can get a pop-up that says changes saved. Other than that, I can create a new task. So let's say today, other than all these things, I also want to send email to my friend. And I'm going to add this new task. As you can see, it was added to the list, it was added to the database, and now I added another task for my day. And I can do this for virtually any day on the calendar. I can go to January 11th. You can see we have no tasks yet. So the first task I would say is um, cook food and I'm going to add a new task and you can see it was added right here. So that's really a short demo of the application. Now the way this series will be divided is into four parts. In the first video, which is this video, we're going to set up the interface and learn the principles of PyQt5 and understand certain things related to setting up this project. Now, in the second video, we're going to work with this calendar widget, which is one of the many widgets that PyQt5 provides. We're going to learn how it works, how to set it up, how to write some code related to it, and we'll see that in video number two. Now, in video number three, we're going to work with this thing right here that we call a list widget. So it's a list, and we have a checklist inside this list. All right, and in video number four, we're going to be integrating a database. We're going to be using SQLite to integrate this database with this small app and save this data in a database. All right, so that's really it for the introduction of the video. Without further ado, let's get started with working on this project. So let's start by looking at the requirements for this project. What do we need to actually set up this project before we can start working with it? The first thing I have here is an empty PyCharm project. So I'm using a PyCharm project for this. If you're not familiar with PyCharm, it's a Python IDE, but you can use virtually any text editor that you like, as long as you're comfortable with it and you're used to developing Python code with it. So I'm using PyCharm, you can use VS Code, you can use Atom, Sublime, literally any text editor that you like. So an IDE is not necessary for this type of project. The next thing I want to use is this designer tool. So this is Qt Designer. This is a tool provided to us by PyQt5. The main purpose of this designer is that it provides us an interface in which we can drag and drop different UI components to create our interfaces before we actually go and code the functionality behind them. This provides us with a way to better set up our interfaces in a faster, more convenient method using drag and drop without having to code every single UI element on our screen like a button, a label, or things like that. And that's really it. That's the idea behind Designer. Now, I'm not going to show the installation for Qt Designer and for PyQt5 in general in this video. You can refer to a previous video of mine. It's a short few minute video that you can look at and see how we can actually install these things. So I will link, link it in the description down below. All right, now that we know what we need, so we need three things. We need the PyQt5 Python library, we need a text editor or an IDE, and we need Qt Designer for this project. Let's actually get started. So what I'm going to do, to do first is I'm going to create a widget. So I'm just going to press create, and now I have this empty widget. Again, this Qt Designer thing provides me with a way to drag and drop elements onto the screen. So I can have a button, I can have a checkbox, I can have multiple types of things. So I can get a label and then I can change the text here to say, you know, hi, um, things like that. So you get the point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of this and I'm going to give it an arbitrary size that I just chose visually. Now let's actually talk about this um, for future practices. So this is a beginner level application and we are setting the um, 
we are setting the uh, length and the width, or actually the width and the height, for this um, interface ourselves. So we're doing this manually. Now, there are better ways to do this, or there are more um, dynamic ways to do this. So you can do this with respect to your screen size or with respect to different types of things. We can do this later on in a different video, but for now what we're going to do is we're going to set the height and the width manually. And now that we have this, we can go ahead and save this file. So what we're going to do is we're going to save it in the location of our PyCharm project. So I'm going to do that. So I named the file main.ui. So this is the name and we can actually find it in the PyCharm project. So this is the directory in which I saved it. So I saved it in this PyQt5 tutorials, PyQt5 daily task management, which is the app that we're trying to make. Now, let's start by dragging some UI elements onto our widget. So this is a Q widget, which is representative of the window that we will have when we open up the application. So let's start by dragging a few UI elements and setting up the interface that we will later on be coding and adding functionality to. All right. So if you remember from the demo I showed at the beginning of this video, we had something called a calendar widget. So this is the calendar widget. It's a built-in calendar. It helps you um, pick a date. So you can also call it a date picker if you want. So you can change the date, like let's see. So if you press Control R on Windows and you open it like that, you have a preview. So this will preview your interface after you run it. Of course, this is without any code, without anything. So when I preview it, I can show you how the calendar could be used, how we can pick different dates. We can change the months. We can go forward backward and so on so that's what the preview is all right so now i can save this i can move this here maybe then the next thing that i want to add so what is the next thing i want to add it's a list widget so this will contain our tasks it will contain the checklist for our tasks now the list view and a list widget are a bit different now i'm going to go into more detail about each of these in separate videos so the way this series is is in the first video i'm going to just talk about setting up our project talk about setting up the interface the second video, I'm going to talk about the calendar widget, so this little date picker that we have here. Third video, we're going to talk about list the list widget, and we're going to maybe go a bit uh, um, into detail about the difference between list widget and list view, and the different functionalities for it. And in the final video, the fourth video, we're going to add some database integrations so that we actually have a functioning application. All right, so what I'm going to do now is maybe just increase the size a bit and make it a bit more um, aesthetically pleasing. Of course, we can move this around and I'm going to increase um, the calendar and I can change the font size in a bit as well. So I'm just going to do this. All right, for now, it looks good. Of course, it's not a fantastic UI. It's not, um, you know, like the most beautiful interface, but for now, it's a beginner's tutorial and we can see we have a calendar and we have a list widget. All right. What is the next thing we're going to add? The next thing we're going to add is a couple buttons. So we need two buttons actually. So I'm just going to search here for button. So this is the push button. The first button is for saving our changes. So let's say save changes. This is for when we make changes to our checklist and we want to save them in the database. The second button we're going to add is this push button right here. So this button, we're going to add it here. Okay. And this one, we're just going to call it add new. And this will enable us to add a new task to our task list for this specific date that we chose. All right, looks good for now. The last thing we want to add is a label. And this label, the purpose of it is just to display text on the screen. So I'm going to add this label. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it, let's say, daily task planner. And as you can see, the label is unstyled. It has tiny font and the buttons as well. So they have no look for now. So this is step one. We set up our interface. We added all the elements that we need. Now, for step two, we actually need to style these elements, make them look a bit pretty. So the first thing I'm going to style is this label right here. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to press change style sheet. 
When I press change style sheet, I get this little text editor open up. What is this text editor? This text editor enables me to write some CSS to style this UI element. This is another feature of Qt Designer that enables us to develop faster and easier because we don't have to write everything via the code. So this is the style that I have. I'm going to press apply. And as you can see, it looks a bit off for now, but let's actually increase the size of this and create this little header for our application. Cool. So I'm just going to bring this a bit down. So again, if I change the style sheet, I can see what I've done so far. So I've changed the background color. I gave it this light blue color. I changed the font size. I made it to be 24. And then I gave it a small border radius just to have it look a bit curved around the edges. And I gave the font color white. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to align this label to be in the center. So here I have this property editor. This is another feature of Qt Designer that enables me to edit different properties for this UI element. So for the Q label, I will scroll down here. So at first you can see there's Q object, Q widget, Q frame, and then finally Q label. Why is that? This is because Q label is inherited from these different classes. So I will have the different properties for these classes available for me to be edited, but we just want to edit the label. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to alignment. So here I'm just going to increase this a bit. And what I want to do is I want to horizontal align it in the center. And now I have the text in the center. All right. So I'm going to save my interface, just make this a bit smaller. So I'm going to leave the styling for the calendar widget and the list widget for their respective videos, because we will have in-depth videos talking about each of these two different elements. The last thing I'm going to style is these two buttons right here. So again, I'm just going to make them match our aesthetic a little bit. So I'm going to add the style. So I'm going to start by styling this button. I'm going to press change style sheet, add a style, and now I'm going to press apply. So as you can see, the color changed and you can see that again, we set a border radius to make the edges curved. Why is that? So we just want to make it look a bit more modern by changing the border radius. However, one thing to note is that on Windows 11, as you can see, which is what I have right now, you can see that the edges are actually by default kind of curved. However, for Windows 10 and any of the previous Windows OS versions, you would not have these curved. You would have these have pointed edges. So for the sake of the tutorial, we are actually adding the border radius. Next, I change the background color and again, I change the font color and size. So I press OK and now it looks good. So actually, I'm going to use the exact same style here. So I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to add it to this button, but I'm not going to change the font size. So now I'm going to press apply. And as you can see, we have our button right here. Now we can make this look a little bit better. What we can do is we can actually move these a bit to the right and just stretch this guy out as well as this guy. And the other thing we can do is we can increase the size and just move everything a bit down. So we're doing this for just aesthetic reasons. And now I can lower this guy so I can have a bigger header. All right. So we have set up our interface. We have styled the elements and now it looks good. Again, we will be styling these two things in the next videos. Now that we've set up our interface, let's start talking about setting up our code. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty Python file. So I'm just going to go new Python file. I'm going to name it main.py. And here we go. So now we have this empty Python file. All right. So how do we get started with coding a PyQt5 application? Now let's start with the imports. So the first thing I want to import is from pyqt5.qtwidgets. I'm going to import qwidget, which is representative of the widget that we created in the designer, right? And qapplication so that I can be able to launch my application. For now, this is all that we need. Later on, we'll be adding more and more imports. All right. Now that I have these two things, the next thing I want to import is something from, uh, so from pyqt5.uic, I'm going to import load UI. 
So this load UI function will enable me to load my UI file that I created in the designer into our code. All right. And the final thing I want to import is sys, um, which is representative of the system in Python. And we'll be using this to pass arguments as well as to execute the application. All right. Now that I have my imports, obviously they are grayed out because I haven't yet used them. The first thing I'm going to define is a class for our UI. So I'm going to call this class. Um, I can give it literally any name, so I can go with window and it will inherit Q widget. Why is that? This is because our, our UI, so if we go back to the designer, you can see here that this is a Q widget. So it inherits Q widget. Of course, now I can come back here. Now that I have my class definition, I want to define the constructor for the class. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to call the constructor for the super class. So for the um, Q widget. So I'm just going to say window self dot in it. All right. Now that I have this, now that I have um, called the constructor for the super class, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load the UI. So I will call load UI and I will give the name of the UI file. So main dot UI, and then I'm going to pass self. So what I'm saying here is I want to load this UI file, the elements from this UI into this class. So they will become um, class variables. So the buttons that we added in the UI, um, the different calendar widget, the list widget, these will be added as attributes or variables in this class, right? More on that later, you'll see when we start using these variables, you will see how they are structured and how this load UI um, function works. All right. So now that I have this, I have basically defined my class. I defined the window. The next thing I'm going to do. So actually one thing is just create a new line just so that for the formatting. All right. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, so if name is equal to main, here is what I'm going to do. So this, I'm defining the main part of my code. This is where the execution happens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a window object, which is an instance of the class that we defined earlier. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an application. So I'm going to say app equals Q application, and then I'm going to pass sys.argv. And here what I'm saying is I'm passing the command line arguments into the creation of this Q application. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, window dot show. So I'm just saying, please show the window, show this Q widget. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say sys.exit and then I'm going to say app.execute. All right. Now that I have this, I can actually run my file. One thing I want to change is actually this. So this should be, sorry, this should be here. You need to define the widget after you define the queue application. So sorry for that. That was an error on my part. Now, if I just press run, as you can see, we have opened up the application. So you can see the Q widget. This is the application that we defined. This is what we designed in the designer. And yeah, that's really it. So now we were able to launch this application. So let's talk a bit about what's coming in the next video. So in the next video, we're going to work with the calendar widget. We're going to add the code for that. Then in the video after that, we're going to work with this part right here. So the list widget to create the checklist. And finally, in the final video, what we're going to do is we're going to work by integrating the database. So we're going to add database integration so that we can save our daily tasks in a database. All right. So that's really it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.